Do, 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 do. Or whatever the music. Uh, uh, oh, it works. It works. Sit in it for a bit. Hi everyone, and <laughs> welcome to Sit in it for a bit with Arne and Carlos. And we are, as always, your host, Arne and Carlos. We are live. And uh, we are still issues with the uh, how to broadcast this live. Uh, at the moment, we're very analog, as you saw. We've got our little, our little sit, in sit in it for a bit sign that we printed. <laughs> uh, Eric hasn't taught us anything. So we have no idea how to go live other than from our phone, our iPhone. So right now, you know, we're used to a big studio. Right now, our studio is this big because it's got a phone and we're pretty much looking at the and phone. And it can pop up everywhere. Yeah, and we're trying to figure out uh, if we can also look at it from here. Probably so we can see the comments. So we can see the comments. Yeah, here we are. But we, so, you know, we want to look at the screen yeah. as well. So uh, I, you can see the comments. Yeah. So anyway, we're really happy to be back. We'd sit in it for a bit. We went on a break, uh, on a long break, uh, to have some summer holidays and to try to figure things out. And now we're back. <laughs> and did we figure things we out? We figured a couple of things out. Some things. Yeah. Fun. And well what done. we figured out that is the most important thing that we figured out was we were going to be doing this uh, podcast live every Wednesday. And when we cannot do it as a podcast live from our studio, we will be doing Sit In It for a bit hello, where we will be taking you on a journey. Yeah, we'll show you where we are yeah. at the moment. But but today we are at home. Today we are at home and Eric is not here yeah. and uh, I really need to start learning how to do this uh, properly. I'm reading a lot of comments here, Arne. We have been missed. We have been missed. Yeah, we've been missing you too. Yes, so we have. It's good to be back. It is, yeah. <laughs> We have a couple of milestones that we're celebrating this week. Uh, one of the biggest ones is the 150,000 subscriber. We passed that uh, mark uh, a couple of, I think it was a, about a, a week. No. no, 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 no. It was like Sunday or Monday. We had that. Week. No, Friday. It was Friday. Friday. We did the video. Yeah. yeah. Last Friday, we passed 150,000 subscribers. It's a very big uh, milestone, not a landmark, sorry, a milestone. Yeah. It's a big milestone for us, um, and we've got a lot of brand new subscribers as well. So um, why don't we start by introducing ourselves first? So I'm Arne, and this is Carlos, and we came from the fashion world. We were we, we made our own collections for many years, and then we quit, and we started to do books. Yeah. And now we do YouTube. Yeah. We are designers. Uh, we work uh, nowadays in the knitting, uh, crochet and embroidery industry. We do a lot of pattern designs. And we're from Norway. We are based in Norway. Yep. Uh, we live on top of a mountain in um, a train station that we have renovated and created into a creative base and studio. And we have a dog. Her name is Freya. Yep. We used to have another dog, Helmer. We're going to be telling you the story of Helmer in a bit. But uh, now it's just the two of us and the dog. Yeah. And if you're brand new to our channel and you've never seen Sit In It For A Bit before, this is not really a podcast that is all about knitting. This is a podcast where we talk about anything and everything and then people sit and knit for a bit. So that's kind of the thing. Yeah. But that being said, we are knitters, crocheters, embroiderers. And if you are not familiar with our work, go to arnacarlos.com. Our website and you can have a look at um, our portfolio if you go to a portfolio yeah. you can see a lot of the work that we've done for the past 12 years yeah and we also work with Rowan so we're part of the Rowan designer group or what you call it and we have this joke going on every time we do a video because Freya is always barking at moose yeah so there's always moose moose mm -hmm. but today we have a footer in another place because we are going on a we wedding this yeah. weekend. So we have to take so have someone to take care of Freya for us. Mm. So we drove her to this other house today. Yeah, and we ended up in actually like in a knitting club. Yeah. So. Oh, we've got a knitting today. Okay, let's sorry for interrupting you, Arne, but because we're live, we yeah. have to answer questions as well. David Hansley is asking uh, what the advent calendar this year will be. Uh, well, at the moment, uh, we are not at liberty to disclose that information. <laughs> but there will be. There will be something. Yeah, we're planning something. We're planning something, yeah. So, well, there's yeah, always an advent calendar. Sweezy Wysum asked exactly the same question. Yeah, there so, will be an advent calendar. Yeah, a lot of people want to want to do the advent calendar. Anyway, as Arne was saying, Freya is away. And for some mysterious reason, whenever Freya is away, there's no moose around. Well, at least we don't see them because she doesn't tell us, but we have had a lot of cows. 
walking mm. around on the platform yeah. or what was the platform in the old yeah. days. And it's really good because they leave a lot of droppings, yes. what you call it. And when, the, when the, they dry, I pick them up and I put them in the compost. Yeah, so... It's good for the garden. Yeah, recycling at its best. Recycling. Yeah, we forgot to mention <laughs> we're also very keen gardeners um, as well. Yeah. Got a lot of people coming in, um, lots of people. And uh, lots of comments as well. And mostly people are saying hello right now. Yeah. Hello. So hello everybody. I've seen somebody here from Guatemala, which right. is that's far away that's from far Norway. Away. That's very far away from Norway. Oh, we got Jide from Denmark is here as well. So hello Jide. <laughs> hello Jide. Uh, nice to meet you <laughs> or e meet you. And Wisconsin and loads of loads of other places. Oh, and then sorry, Susie. So uh, the person who was asking about the calendar, I I pronounced it. Suezy, but it's actually pronounced Susie because it's Welsh. Oh. So it's Welsh for Susan. Um, so yeah, hello Susie. Sorry for we'll, we'll mispronouncing. We're we'll learning. Yeah, about that. No. we learn something yeah. every single day. Um, so what else has happened since last time? Well, we're talking about some milestones and things some that milestones. we're celebrating. We are celebrating something very important this week because. It's my birthday on Friday. It's, it's this birthday on Friday, and some of you know that I'm always been I'm, I have always dr driven the car when we go places, but now he has got his driver license. I did it! Yeah. Finally, he made it. It was so cool. I was yeah. so nervous. So I was waiting in the car like, when he was doing his um, first. Test. He had one yeah. class, and then he did the test, and I saw when he came back that he had made it. So now. Like today, we went to Lillehammer and I was crocheting the whole way yeah. because I don't I have driving. to drive anymore. Yeah. So it's so it's so cool. Yeah. So, so congratulations. Thank to you. Carl. I feel so good. I my, I have a huge confidence boost. Yeah. That's for sure. And he's so good when it, in wow. traffic. He's still good driving. Well, that's what you usually say. You say I'm so good when you cook. So I'm going to say I'm so good. Well, you are. When I drive the You're car. You're so good. The thing is, a lot of people. I we may have mentioned it before that I didn't have a driver's license, and actually the reason why because I'm I'm going to be 52 on Friday, but the reason why I didn't have a driver's license. 28 is someone not. 29. 29. But the reason why I didn't get a driver's license before was because I had severe car anxiety. So that was kind of my handicap. It was my disability. And it was holding me back. I would not take a driver's license because I was afraid that I'd fall asleep in the car yeah. or stuff like that. But and now he drives like yeah. so good. So and and the, the, the guy who was in the car when you took the test, he made... Gave you so many compliments. Well, he actually well he had driving. to file a report too. Yeah, but I mean, anyway, what I was going to say, what I was going to say, Arna, was that um, that when during the pandemic, I decided that uh, because I almost died of COVID a few years ago. So you know, when I kind of figured I was so close to death, I realized that I have to do something about about my driver's license. <laughs> and it still took me a while because I had all that anxiety to work through. So it wasn't until July last year that I asked you. Yeah. Remember, I asked yeah. you, could you? Could we, you know, could you teach me? Yeah. And then, then we started. Yeah, yeah. And then because I've had COVID, my brain is a little bit muddled. So it wasn't easy. And I'm also older now. So I had to take classes as well with a with an instructor. And and then of course it's me. I'm very ambitious and I'm very I'm a perfectionist. So I didn't want to take a, a regular uh, driver's license for an automatic car. So I have taken my driver's license on a car with a stick shift. But you need to have that because we have the old Beetle, the Volkswagen. So yeah. if you don't have the driver's license for a stick, yeah. you can't drive a stick in Norway. So you have to have a car with a stick. No, shift, stick. <laughs> shift, shift, shift stick. stick. Gear stick. Oh, my English is so good. It's, Never... <laughs> it's got gears anyway, you know, one, two, three, four, yeah. five, six. Yeah. And, and talking about the Beetle, the Beetle is still in the hospital. Because the clutch, I think it's in English, it broke down yeah. and we haven't got any news. So I think no news is good news. No news is good news, yeah. So she will be back. Yeah, she will be back. Anyway, uh, what the moral of my story is that you're never too old for anything. Um, if I can take a driver's license, if I can pass a driver's license test on a gear shift stick car, 
at the age of 52 with some issues with muddled brain because of COVID, that means that I can do anything I set my mind to it. And if I can do anything I set my mind to, you can do anything you set your mind to as well. So it, what, you know, what, whatever it is, whether it is that you want to take a driver's license, whether you've been dreading the steaking of a sweater, whether you have been um, you know, worried about color work because you feel like you're inexperienced, if you set your mind to it, you can do it. And I believe in you, and I think that you're going to be fantastic at whatever it is that you put your mind to. Because you will do like, yeah. the boat certificate next. Yeah, now that I've done, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now that I've done my driver's license, next year I'm going to go for the boat one. So I'm going to get yeah. the boat, I'm going to do the boat thing, the boat exam. And so when we go to America and Canada in November, you will drive. I'm going to be driving a lot. Have a yeah. rental car. Absolutely. And you will drive and I will read the map. Yeah. That can go terribly wrong because I'm so bad when I read maps. Mm. So. I don't know. Yeah, so yeah, we have to see. We've got a lot of people congratulating me. Thank you so much uh, for all your support, and uh, I think that uh, yeah, it's it's really something that is boosting my confidence. I felt so good today, and that's also strange uh, from from doing the driver's license or the test or practicing until today when I was able to drive on my own. The, the, the concentration ability that I have now, uh, that I have a driver's license, is, I mean, it's incomparable to what it was a few days ago. I really am focused. I really know that I can do this. And I have to say something else because there's a very fun uh, driving, uh, ex the examiner yesterday, he is official, he's from Norway, uh, from the Norwegian authorities. And in Norway, it's actually pretty hard to get a driver's license. I mean, the, the, the requirements are very high and the test is actually very difficult, both the theoretical one um, and, the, and the exam itself. So it's one of the countries with a very, very high requirements. Mm -hmm. So I was dreading this and I've been dreading the test, the, the, the test in the car. I was dreading this since I decided I was going to take my driver's license. This is literally my worst nightmare. This is what I would wake up at night <gasps> like that. And for some reason, I slept very well. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And I go, I go together with my driver instructor. We go to the authorities, and the guy comes in this uniform. He's this big guy, um, and he's about my age. And I, you know, very shy and very nervous. With the, hello, hello, you know, with this voice. <laughs> and the first thing he says is, uh, "Don't be nervous. I'm on your side." And then when we get in the car, he asks me, do you want me to be quiet? Do you want the radio on? Do you just want to, uh, you know, if you don't want me to talk, I won't talk. But if, if you want to talk, I'll talk. And uh, this long story short, um, it was one of the nicest hours I've had in a very long time. I met this amazing person uh, who was my, the person who was going to either flunk me or give me my license. <laughs> And he was just lovely. We had a wonderful conversation of one hour while I was doing everything he told me to do. And uh, the sad thing is, because he doesn't live here, he, he, came, he came in from another town to, to do the exams yesterday. I'll never see him again, so, but I'll always cherish that wonderful, lovely hour. That yeah, that's so him. different from when I took my driver's license, because yeah. I felt they were like, they look, look for something wrong or something. Yeah. It was so scary. Mm -hmm. But that's like 100 years ago. So, yes, it is. <laughs> so, let's see what we have comments here. Um, Barbara Hermsmeyer is saying that she understands the real worry about taking the driver's test. And she's so glad that it is over. Congratulations. You earned <laughs> it. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, and we've got Liana here as well. Remember Liana? Yeah. Hi, Liana. Hey, Liana. I'm going to see you on the cruise again. Yeah, I was. And, and in, in Prince Edward Island and yeah. in New Orleans. And in New Orleans. Yeah. So that would be cool. So, yeah, we're going to be touring again. Uh, that's also one of the big things that um, that is kind of like uh, good news for a lot of people is mm -hmm. that uh, after two years uh, of not traveling, or two and a half actually, we are now Probably, finally yeah. going to go back to the US to do some um, workshops and some classes. And we're very excited. Uh, New Orleans was the last destination to open and uh, it's available now for signups. Um, and New Orleans is organized by Vogue Knitting Magazine and Vogue Knitting Live. So if you wanna sign up for New Orleans, you can, you can do so by going to the Vogue Knitting magazine website and then go to Vogue Knitting Live and then look for destinations and you'll see New Orleans there and you can sign up and 
get to hang out with us there. And I have to say, I'm looking forward to New Orleans because it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be jazz, it's going to be parties, yeah. and it's going to be knitting, of course, I think obviously. They just spent one night, the one time we went to New Orleans, yeah. and then we had to leave because of a hurricane. So I hope we will have nice weather this time. Yeah. So it's, it's, it was a very nice place. And there was a nice Christmas shop. I found the shop yeah, with Christmas Orleans, ornaments. Yeah. But yeah, it was sad that, you know, we were going to spend three days there and we got uh, and we got evacuated because of the hurricane, which I suppose is quite normal there. Probably. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this time in November we will be fine. Oh, look here. We've got Joy, Joy Yiske. I, I pronounce it Yiske because it's a Norwegian name in my opinion. Uh, Joy was with us on our cruise in May. Yeah. And she's bummed that she can't see us in Chicago uh, and that we should do a three hour detour. I really wish we had time for that, but, but unfortunately, probably meet you another place. We don't, but exactly, the world is small, and uh, we can meet somewhere else some yeah. other time. So, so that's fine. great. Okay, so New New England is asking what side of the road we drive on, um, and we drive Same. on the right side of the road. I mean, the right hand side of the road, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is the way the Americans drive. Um, and uh, and actually, all of Europe drives on the right-hand side of the road, except for uh, the UK. Well, the British, so the UK and um, and also uh, Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, and I, I, I believe Malta as well. Um, I know, Malta, I believe, also drives. But it's on not the as left. scary when we go to England and we rent a car. Yeah. It takes two days before we get used to being on the other side of the road, and then when you come home, it's yeah. like your head is totally messed up so mm. two times we have come back from England and I put yeah. the car on the wrong side mm. of the road yeah it's scary that is scary because it's almost like you learn to drive again mm. so we probably do that yeah I don't think we have that much time for fun facts but I'm going to do a fun fact anyway uh, Sweden used to drive on the left hand side of the of the road the same as the UK and Ireland and, and Malta and the reason for that is, well, actually, the whole reason why we drive on the right-hand side of, of, of the road in Europe, except for the, U, the UK and Ireland and Malta, is that um, Napoleon, he, you know, actually, originally, Julius Caesar decided that, uh, that all the cars should be, or all the... Cyprus do it also. Yeah, Cyprus, of course, okay. yeah. So anyway, Napoleon decided that uh, all the... Julius Caesar decided uh, back in the you know back in the old days uh, that all, all all vehicles would be on the left side, and then when Napoleon started his wars in Europe, he wanted to do something big, so he decided to to move the the wagons and everything to the right side. And Sweden was actually fighting um, in England's on England's side against Napoleon, so Sweden followed lead. And so Sweden had left-hand traffic until 1970... Something? You or remember it? it? No, I was too young. I heard about it. It was because I think because I remember people were scared to drive to in Sweden, Sweden, Sweden yeah. because when you came to the border, you had to change the drive. The what, what you call that? The side of the road. Yeah, you have to change the so side of the road. Very yeah. scared. Yeah, so Sweden had that until 1970, either 72, 74, or 76, I yeah. don't remember. And, and then that night, so the night that they moved traffic, um, everything in the whole country stood still for a minute. There was like a minute of, of, of no, no moving, yeah, that's... stillness. And then the cars started doing, you know, every other, you know, one this and then one that. So and so everything just moved to... I think it was up to 12 o'clock at night. Yeah, so midnight. People, people were up. To yeah. watch the traffic change. Yeah. And stuff. So, so not that it was so much traffic that time. Well, it was in the seventies, so yeah. I guess a little bit less than sixty-seven. Now. Yeah. Sixty-seven. Oh. Somebody says. Yep. Oh. Sixty-seven. Okay, so yeah, I wasn't even born in nineteen sixty-seven. So maybe that's oh. why I heard about it. Yeah. Because I was how old was I? <laughs> yeah, here it is, nineteen sixty-two from Venster. Yeah. Venster to Hoge traffic. Yeah. So nineteen sixty-seven. So so I was kind of, yeah, I, I, I turned it around. I was thinking You were like in the oven. No, no, but yeah, yeah, I was a bun in the oven, yeah. <laughs> not quite. Not, not. But it was in 19, 19, I would say 1976, which is actually just moved the... So I think I may have visually thought about it. So, so yeah. I can't remember much of it because I was only four years old. Yeah. Something, but everybody talked about it. So 
And what else, what else had happened, Carlos? So I'm just looking at comments. We've got uh, we've got Debbie Wren asking when we are coming to England. Actually, we talked about that with yesterday. Roland yesterday, and we haven't planned anything yet, but we will go, come back to England yeah, as in, soon as possible. As soon as possible, but in 2023, unfortunately. But uh, England or the UK and Ireland are on top of our list for 2023. Um, Actually, for another fun fact, the UK was the last place we went to before the pandemic. Mm. Um, and now it's time to go back to the UK. Uh, the US is going to be, or, and Canada, are going to be the first two countries that we travel to for work. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and, we'll be, and we'll be doing the UK and Ireland next year. And Japan. Japan, Japan is Japan. also on the pipeline yeah. for next year. So, we haven't been uh, there for a long yeah, time. we haven't been there, and we haven't been to Germany, and uh, and we've got T Titania, Titania, or Titania saying hello from Austria. We've never been to Austria. I've been there. On the yeah, but not for work. Not for work. <laughs> so, so yeah, the good thing about these live things, Arne, is if we say something wrong, we get corrected. And that's good because I think we, that's they don't know everything. That's really cool. Okay, you got a comment on your on your shirt uh, you. or your T-shirt? It's it my. Oh, Tiger. Yeah. Well, Susan's writing that Arnest shirt reminds of one of the blind dead ladies' tapestries that he is finishing from the thrift store. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Mm -hmm. But talking about the blind lady, because this uh, this summer I got what do you call that tennis elbow mm. because I was doing so much embroidery and I was fixing my shirts because they had me. I added fabric on them and then I took some of the inspiration from some of the patterns on the shirt and did cross stitches. But I was holding it like yeah. this, like I could sit for a day like this, holding the little embroidery doing mm. this, and then I got the tennis elbow. So I haven't done a lot this summer no. because the doctor told me well, not to. <laughs> the doctor, the doctor and I ordered you to not do anything. Yeah, and that, that is really hard. I started again a little bit now and so like, I started to feel there was something coming when we went on the garden tour to mm. Italy. So that that's when I was working on on the on the brioche sweater. Yeah. I had the. Um, I'm working on this one. This is in the Norwegian yarn, our yarn from Rowan. So I, I I made a sleeve this time first, so the sleeves are finished. I did one sleeve, I guess, on the finished one and and I uh, started, the, or made the other one on the bus. Yeah. And then I started with the ribbing for the front or the back, I don't know yet. And I haven't touched it yet Yeah. since then. So this but, is going to be with me now when we go to Sweden. Yeah. Because you're driving ah. and I can do my brioche sweater. Yeah. So this is the second one. I made a grey one and now I'm doing a blue one and I want one in every colour. Yes, absolutely. Here is the grey <laughs> one. The, the grey one's actually finished. We don't remember if we showed it on, on sitting it for a bit, uh, but the grey one's really nice. And um, and it's it's oversized and it's perfect for home wear. So mm -hmm. I love this in the morning because I'm a pajamas gardener. I love gardening and I love gardening in my pajamas. Sometimes in the morning here in Norway, especially when the sun is not out, it's a little chilly. Yeah. And so this sweater in the, evening, you can in the evening, yeah, this sweater is perfect for a chilly mor uh, morning out in the garden. Uh, really, really comfy. Um, and I think that I'm going to live in this. Well, not this one, because this one's a bit too short, but the next one. Actually, I'm uh, adding five centimeters on this one for the body, but because I like them a little bit shorter mm. and you want them a little bit longer, but yeah. I can also wear your length. Yeah. So, but now this is, we send this to Rowan and they are making... Rowan's like, helping us out. Yeah, they're making the patterns yeah. because... So we, we want wrote, to have professional people doing yeah. the pattern. So what we well the grading actually. The grading, not the pattern. Yeah. The grading. So we wrote the pattern. We sent it to Rowan, and Rowan is now uh, grading it. And uh, for all of you who are waiting for this sweater, because we've been you know knitting these now. Uh, well, you have been knitting most of them, but uh, it's been done this fall, this spring, and uh, you guys have been following. And we think that we can have a pattern out before October. So stay tuned our, on our web shop. Uh, we're going to call this the Arne Cozy Sweater or something. And we and can also do those reels on Instagram to show mm -hmm. how we do the, yeah. the, the brioche Norwegian style when you knit back and forth because it's so quick and oh, so easy. We've got a book tip. 
Heidi Heidi Quijer. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing oh, your name. Oh, gardening. There is an English book called Gardening in My Pajamas, so I need to get that. I have to write that. Yeah, book. write we'll that. Go back and read the comments. Let's make a mental note. We need that book. I it's, must... it's crazy when you get all these, you get the good uh, book tips. I always yeah. go and order them. Exactly, yeah. I ordered three books last week. Yeah, time. we're going to show you when they come. There's a this really amazing book that, that we were, uh, that we just discovered. It's, it's, it's about all the colors in nature. And it's all these illustrations of all these, you know, things in nature, birds, trees. And it's got the little squares with all the cup. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really It is nice. so amazing, you know, for a creative uh, people like us. Who Maybe we have to show them because there was another yeah. floral book we saw when we went to the garden tour in Italy. And there was only one left mm. in the in the bookshop. So yeah. I got that one. So uh, about Arne, I am yes. determined that he is going to be... 100% uh, well. So what we've done, and I've been pushing a lot, we've been asking dear friends and relatives for help with the knitting so that we can get out some patterns this fall. And that has actually allowed Arne to um, to go on a break. And we're also, uh, um, our doctor put Arne on sick leave. He's been on 100% sick leave for a month, but he still has been working because you can work Office, you could do. I can use, you, use this you, hand. Yeah, you can do and office stuff. I start to use this hand, so I've, I've been knitting a little bit now, and it doesn't hurt in the in the arm. Mm. But I I have to. I can't always do the embroidery, especially holding it like this. So yeah. I found a really nice big frame, mm. so I can put on my lap and on the table, and then I can work from above and under. So I tried that a little bit, and that is really good. It but is, it yeah. doesn't work for the shirts because yeah. the shirts are so small. So maybe I have to buy a new shirt. Yeah, and I also insisted. I also insisted that he went to see my physiotherapist. I went to to physiotherapy when I had COVID and after well after COVID because I needed to get my breathing techniques and you know get back to health. And my physiotherapist is excellent. And now Arne is going, and uh, she's been uh, doing. You're doing a lot I'm of exercises. Exercises like lifting those things. <laughs> yeah, these weights, you know, he's doing, yeah, you're know. doing, like, you're, with the weights, you're yeah. doing this. Yeah. And then I also got like a rubber band that you can use to train your arms. So mm. I just, I need to uh, train shoulders and yeah. arms. So maybe I will be a bodybuilder in the future. Maybe you will, yeah. yeah. Well, I, will, I will take all the whole picture now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. you buff and uh, oh, yeah, buffed up. I think that will happen. Oh, no, I'm too lazy. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, um, the easy solution now would have been a cortison shot. And then I, had it, I had one and that was... But that's not... It doesn't help. It just, it, it just it went away for a while and then it came back. Yeah, but now I'm sh I'm doing crocheting and knitting and I'm gonna change. Yeah, I can't do one thing the whole day because see, if I wake up at six o'clock in the morning and I'm starting a new project, I can't stop. So I just work the whole day until I fell asleep or yeah. uh, knitting or something. So I have to be careful. Timothy Baird, who is actually Shirley, yeah, uh, is, uh, <laughs> Shirley. is asking about the treadmill, whether whether you'll be doing oh, the, the treadmill. Oh, the treadmill is so ugly. ugly. So, and finally, he listened to me. So he We're has, getting it out of the house. It's, yeah, we're going to sell it. It's hideous. We're going to put it out for sale. Yeah, and I'm going to do, I don't it's know. It's so ugly. I said, why don't you walk the dog? Yeah, I'll walk in nature I'll instead. climb a mountain. There are like lots of mountains around there. And it takes the whole guest room. Yeah. It's so bad. We're gonna. So we've bad. got. We've got our snowshoes. We've got skis for winter, and and we've got beautiful tracks for summer. I'm not gonna. You know that treadmill. It's it's it. We <laughs> it put, was a face. We put it in it our guest room we, or in our guest house. We put it there, and it is this. Our guest house is beautiful. It's painted in this beautiful green color, and then it's got like lovely furniture and, and the, a treadmill. Yeah, and a treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> And, well, and when we and have a bookshelf, yeah, a beautiful bookshelf. I made a beautiful book. Yeah, because we want our guests to be comfortable, and so we love putting the books that we love, the ones that we read, that when we finish them and we really love them, they go into the guest house, yeah. so that if people come and stay with us and they fancy reading a little bit of a book, um, and then if they want to take it with them, they can. No, it, they no. can borrow them. They can borrow. Yeah, because some of the books are so good, so I read them many mm. times. Some of them are read like two or three times. And yeah. if a book is not so good, then I put it in the back of the Beetle 
and when we go around in Norway there are like in some of the old hotels there are bookshelves where you can put books or you can switch and we also have those old telephone boxes which is like uh, it's like a library yeah. where you can you can take a book and leave a book a lot of people are commenting the the, the standard rut routine of a treadmill uh, Monique van Lille says uh, buy run sell yeah. <laughs> and that is absolutely 100 percent true yeah, our niece so, has one in the basement yeah she said it's been in the basement for years and she like she bought it and she runs so i googled <laughs> i googled treadmills before we bought it and i you know i was suspecting that it could happen so i googled best treadmills within a budget so the cheapest one so ours luckily was not very expensive uh, but I think that we can get a little bit of the money back. Um, I did use it, so I used it the entire fall and spring, so, so it's good. I, I, I feel like I've, I've, I've used it. Somebody was asking what a treadmill is, and Arne, we have to remember, I mean, we're not native English speakers, and we do have a lot of international fans as well. Um, so if you don't understand uh, the word treadmill, treadmill is one of those machines uh, which has a band that goes around like that and you get on it and, and you, you run speed it up and, and you can speed it and you can go up and you can go down and you can do do all these things so now i'm giving you a visual picture of how ugly it's metal and it's got handles like this and it's just horrific mm -hmm. it is so ugly and i saw the question it, it, it went up there now but yeah. it's like how, how i can read books more than one time but that is easy because when we travel i always bring books yeah. because I really don't like being in an airplane for a long time. Yeah. I'm a bit claustrophobic. So now we're like, every time we go into an airplane, we try to be in the middle. So we're Carlos on one side and me on the other side, because if I'm in between two strangers, I get yeah. claustrophobic. But then it helps to read. So so I haven't read a book in a very long time. Um, after I got, I got COVID, for those that don't know, I got COVID in March 2020. We were early trendsetters, obviously. And after COVID, I haven't been able to read a book because of my issues with my brain, especially concentration. But now I'm thinking, I was actually thinking it the other day. And, I, and you know, if I, if, if I was able to get my driver's license, I, I, I think that if I put my mind into reading a book, I'll succeed. You have one and in, the, in that. that yeah, I know. I have, I have tons time. of books that I really want to yeah. read. And, and some of the books that I really, really want to read are the Murakami, the Haruki Murakami yeah. books that you... But those are so yeah, good. Yeah, I want to read those. Uh, what's so, the name again? It's, it's three books. Colonel something. Yeah, I don't know the English title. Yeah, it's the last, it's like a trilogy. It's the last yeah. three books that he wrote. I think he, that he is wrote. so good. I'm going to read more about it. Yeah, him. I'm definitely going to try and give it a go. But yeah, up until now, I haven't been able to read anything, so... It's been hard, but at the same time, now that I've done my uh, my driver's license, I know that I can do anything I set my mind to. So I'm gonna read a book, yeah. and you know we'll take it we'll take it from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the story with Helmer, Arne, a lot of people are asking about yeah. Helmer. Helmer was um, the best dog we've ever best had. Best dog. Sorry, Freya. Freya. Is also She's not here, so she can't. Yeah, exactly. But uh, Fel, you know, Helmer was it was a really really good dog, and he was like. I walked him every morning and we, we walked a lot. So when he left, I stopped walking. Yeah. Means I meet more or do other stuff. We have to walk but, um, and run. But he had the separation anxiety. Yeah, big time. Big time. He, if we left him in the car and he had like a car. Well, no, no, not even that. When we drove to Sweden, he, yeah. he chewed the, the safety belt. Two times he chewed the yeah. safety belt because he had to be in that belt because the car was not big enough for a cage. So we couldn't have a cage in the car. And when we left him with people, if they want, like people who wanted to take care of him while we were traveling, they didn't want to have him back. No. One time was enough because he was so difficult to have in the house. When when he was away from us, he was just mm -hmm. really bad. But the good, and the strange thing was like when we had him here, and he was so it was so good. It was yeah. a really good dog. And he was very he was with us. He was very calm. And then when we left him, or when we had to travel, he would just you know go into pieces. And we realized that. And the separation anxiety, because we we took him in during COVID, because the people that had him they couldn't keep him, and you know have a home office and be locked down in a city with a big dog like that. So they sent him here and asked if we could keep him, and we really said yes because we love him. So the separation. 
separation anxiety was there already. Um, but we, we did teach him a lot and we trained him a lot and he was getting better and better. But every time we left, his, it was like he was heartbroken and we felt that we could do that to him. Totally. So we told the, the previous owners about this and they contacted the breeder. And this is the thing when you have a responsible breeder who loves the dogs she, she breeds in this case. And um, she said, I'll take him back and I will find him a new home. So not only did she take Helmer back, but uh, Helmer stayed with her. In, in the original place where he was born for a month. She wanted to keep him a month with the other dogs to see what kind of behavioral problems mm -hmm. he had so she could give the accurate information to, to the new owners. And the new owners, they turned out to live in Lillehammer, which is a, a city very near here. Yeah. Uh, they are um, an older couple, I mean, middle-aged, I guess, in their 60s. Yeah, they have, have, they, they don't have, travel. They don't travel, they have a big house, a big garden and they like to walk in the mountains. So he's really happy so there. So we think that this is actually the best thing that could happen yeah. to Helmut because it was really hard for him when we left him in some other houses. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was, I think it was the best. It thing. was the best. We were, we were very heartbroken obviously and um, this happened already on May 1st. So we haven't seen him for a long time. And we couldn't actually, we didn't feel that we could talk about it uh, until now because we needed to get some distance because it is yeah. painful. It's really. really hard because he was a nice dog. And, and we don't want to see him ever again no, either. No, I was, actually we went to Lillehammer today and, I, and like when you walk the streets you look for a yeah. grey poodle because if, like, yeah. if we see him he will recognize us, so then I think I just walk in the Yeah, I would just heartbreak. If I had to see him again, my, so my, my heart would really break. Now, we were very lucky because the people who, who put Helmer with us, they were going to take care of him when we went on our knitting cruise. So we were on the knitting cruise when, when the, the previous owners called us up and said we've spoken to the breeder. So that was a great thing. We actually, when we handed Helmer over to uh, to its previous owners. We just said, take care of the house, we'll be back in a week, uh, because or in two weeks, because that's what we thought. Yeah. We thought we were going to see him. So there was no dramatic farewell where we were clinging to him, crying and, you know, <laughs> devastating him even more. Yeah. It was actually very straightforward. It was bye-bye, take care of the house, we'll see you in two weeks. And then we never saw him again. So I think that that's also very good for him. Yeah. There was no hard goodbye. Um, yeah, there was, it was not a, a hard goodbye. And then the the one of the people who in the family took him over to uh, to um, Carmen, where uh, where the, he was bred. So in, on the other side of Norway, on on the west coast, and uh, he had coffee with the owners. And um, and uh, while while he was having coffee, Helma was running with the all, his mother and his sister, yeah. the sister in the same litter. So they were just having this amazing reunion and, and, and it was apparently fantastic to see them so happy. And then he just bid them farewell and left without saying goodbye to Helmer. So it worked out really well. It worked out. He didn't, we didn't abandon him in that no. sense. And I think it's good now because like now we're going to do a knitting cruise again in October and we have a knitting cruise in September and we will be in America and Canada in November. Yeah. So we knew that there will be, there would have been a lot of trouble finding oh yeah, yeah it would have been hard we also knew that he couldn't be in i think it would be hard to put him in a kennel because he was kicked out of like in oslo when he was small they yeah had well a not a kennel or, daycare he was kicked daycare. out of daycare they had daycare and then <laughs> they he kicked was him kicked out. out because he didn't it was behave so difficult yeah so maybe he would have been kicked out of, uh, yeah. of a kennel sherry is mentioning that she still has uh, her helmer merchandise and actually so do we yeah, so got, do we we still have helmer yeah, cups we've got the helmer nice cups helmer. and actually we uh, we have decided we're going to keep this because in our hearts uh, helmer <laughs> is still part of our family so even though he's no longer living here, we still consider him a part of uh, of our family. And I think he is very he's he's like the last picture we saw before the last before he went to Lillehammer, he was turning into grey yeah. because he's a grey poodle. So he's he gonna be grey when we had him, but now he's getting grey. Yeah. So, so I guess he will be. Fra happy. Francis Inglis is asking if we'll get another companion for Freya. And actually, when we got Freya in twenty twelve. We weren't traveling as much. It was just, it was just when we got 
because we were in the fashion industry and we were, when we were in the fashion industry we manufactured we designed and manufactured knitwear that was sold in stores so the traveling that we did then was a week in paris a week in copenhagen and a week in new york twice a year that was so easy and that was it and we didn't meet anybody we were just selling at these trade shows and when we did our sales we disappeared and that was that mm -hmm. and then when we started doing our books the first one was in 2010 and the originally was in norway we weren't traveling that much and then in 2012 we got freya and then it exploded and we became like really famous all over the world and then there was this demand for our traveling. So we didn't know when we got Freya that our life was <laughs> going to change so much. Oh, that's a nice common place to yeah. play Baker. Helmer is your kid that left for college. Yeah. Let's say that he's in college. Yeah, he's now, in college so. right now. Um, the Maybe good I find, you find a girlfriend yeah. or something. Well, the bright know? side of him being in college, he's still he's not calling us up to ask for money. Somebody else is paying yeah, those yeah. bills. So it's so win good. win. So. Yeah. But anyway, we're not going to get a new dog when Freya or for Freya because um, Freya is 10 years old and with Freya it's easy. We've got um, a bunch of people who care for her and we have a housekeeper that comes in once a week and she'll take Freya, no problem. Uh, but when Freya passes, you know, it's inevitable, inevitable one day. She's 10 now, so it could still be so maybe several years. But if we ever retire... We then, can look for a helmet and get yeah. him back, or another poodle. Yeah, whenever or, we retire and stop <laughs> traveling, we'll get two really big uh, uh, poodles, poodle. um, and maybe a little one to have a, you know... Do you think we will ever retire? Uh, probably not. Probably not. But yeah, yeah. so they, they won't be... The, okay, and Yannick Kimstra is saying, except he doesn't bring back huge bags of laundry. No, no. No, that's true. <laughs> that's yeah. also good. That's true. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, Helmer is, oh, as Monique Van Lille says. And we don't have to pick all his. Um, yeah, we don't have to clean drop, up after Droppings him. Yeah. in the garden because they're huge. Yeah. So, uh, Monique Van Lille says, well said, off to live his adult life. Yeah, yeah. We've got lots of questions he has today. Yeah, life. Arne, yeah. we've got lots of questions you today. You can sit and look at that. I know, but I suspect sitting in it for a bit is going to be a little longer than usual. That will be like, I'm going to yeah. hand down in the computer. Okay, so people want an update on my parents in Sweden. My parents are okay. My mom is now um, living in a temporary home uh, while the council finds her a permanent place to live uh, because my father can't uh, cope with her anymore. My mom is um, almost blind. She has uh, issues walking, with, she has mobility issues, and um, she has some dementia. It's not been 100% diagnosed yet, but it's diagnosed as early dementia, and they're still performing tests. So my mom is gonna live on her own, and my dad is gonna live in the house where he lives. And my dad goes to visit um, her every day, so um, he's, you know, yeah. he cares for her deeply. We're in that phase right now where she can't really understand why she's been left. She thinks my dad has left her for another woman and she's accusing him of that. And um, it's very difficult to explain to her because she doesn't understand. Um, we're going to go visit her. We're going to a wedding down at the border between um, Norway and Sweden um, this weekend. And we're going to go thrift shopping as well. We'll tell you a little bit about that too before we, um, we sign off. And uh, after the wedding, we're going to go down to my parents um, and I'm going to visit my mom. My dad actually uh, got seriously sick this summer. Um, he had gallstones and when they made um, an ultrasound, they saw something else in there and they didn't want to operate him. And it went so far that um, he ended up in the emergency uh, room um, and they had to perform a lot of uh, MRIs to see whether he had cancer or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they didn't want to operate the gallstones if he had cancer and it turned out that he didn't so they operated on him and um, and he's recovering from an operation mm -hmm. and uh, when my dad ended up in the emergency room he took my mom because she can't be alone and Arne and I had to just stop what we were doing get in the car and drive I think we left the house around two o'clock and we arrived down midnight Sweden around midnight yeah so to that, pick up my mom so it's good now now that we know she's in a place where people yeah. take care of her if something happens because so, that's a big deal you know if something happens to my dad it takes me seven hours to get there minimum hmm. so if something happens to her I want to make sure she's okay now my parents live in a, one of the most beautiful little summer towns in the in Sweden. It's called Bosta. And my mom currently, even though she is blind, but she has a beautiful view of the sea. So <laughs> from her from her um, from the day oh sorry from the room where they had their their food, they've got a great view of the sea. It's 
She's like living in a cruise right now, and um, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. It's 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 really nice, and she's and the got, whole area is beautiful because yeah. there's a lot of thrift shopping there. Exactly. There's nurses. There's uh, there's uh, caregivers. There's everything. And oh, and speaking of uh, thrift shopping, I changed my mind about thrift shopping. Yeah, I like I, it. I don't now. know what happened, but so, suddenly you're like so into thrift shopping. I it's know. Like, I, I almost have to stop you. Yeah. Because we have so much stuff. Yep. But, but so one of the things, <laughs> one of the things we're going to be doing this uh, fall um, on because we do pop videos on Sundays. One of the things we're going to be doing this fall is we're going to take you thrift shopping with us, and we are going to also look for the blind slash dead lady who left all her stuff in the in the thrift in the thrift store, right? Maybe some of her relatives left. Yeah, there. we're going to look for her anyway. <laughs> I mean, we're going to find out who she is. Maybe it's many different yeah. women. And so, so when we go to the wedding on... Uh, the wedding starts on Friday with a, with a big uh, party for all the friends. And then on Saturday, the wedding starts at four. But the town where the wedding is, it's a town in the south of... of, of uh, or east of Norway, near the border to Sweden, called Fredrikstad. So Fredrikstown. Mm -hmm. And Fredrikstad has a beautiful old town, and the whole thing turns into this massive um, there's so much, market. Actually, now there's so much things yeah. we need. Like, we went to this uh, thrift shop close to Sweden a few weeks ago, and I found these green glasses. Yeah. And they had only three? Yeah. Or four, four. Four. And at least we need six. So we're going to be looking for glass. Glasses, we're going to be looking for china. New china for the kitchen because we have only the blue and white thing. We're going to be looking for textiles, anything embroidered, anything. I, we're just going to be looking we need for lamps. a lot of stuff. Lamps. Lamps. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And so all knitting patterns. Yeah. And then when we and go. Whole house furniture. Exactly. We need everything. <laughs> and then when we go to Sweden, um, because my mom is now in this facility. Um, we're gonna take my dad, and we're gonna go. We're gonna travel over to Denmark because the town where my dad lives is very near Denmark. You just take a, you drive down to Helsingborg. I take the boat, and the then you ferry. take a boat, a ferry over to Helsingør, and you might know of Helsingør because that is where uh, Kronborg Palace is, where yeah, Hamlet, Hamlet takes, takes place. Shakespeare. And the area around Helsingør is really, really good for thrift shops. And the Danes, the Danes, found, the Danes are great. Found a really good one. Yeah. But in Denmark, you can find so much nice stuff. Yeah. But also in Sweden. And you can find good stuff in Norway if you go closer to the border. I think they buy it in Sweden and bring it to Norway. Yeah. So, But there's, there's always good stuff. Yeah, and Denmark has excellent thrift stores. I'm going to take my dad because I think my dad needs a break from... You he know, needs he's to been, get out. He's been him. giving care to my mother now for a full year without you know thinking of himself. And my mother is well now. Um, she's very healthy. That's the thing. She's very healthy, on, except for the issues that she has. Uh, but she's being cared for. Um, the staff are great. The food's great. And, you know, I'm going to try to convince her that it's like living on a cruise. She's on a cruise. And, uh, you know, she's, she gets, if she wants room service, she gets that. She can just ring the bell and they'll bring her hot milk, which she loves. Um, so she's okay. I saw someone want to see more pictures from the thrift shopping. So I guess we will do those reels. Yeah. And post on Instagram. And well. take you. And we're going to be taking you. Because obviously if we are in Sweden um, immediately after the wedding, this means that uh, next time we go live, which will be next Wednesday, it's going to be the first sit and knit for a bit hello. I hope we so, have a connection. Um, we, yeah, Internet. fingers crossed we'll have connection. <laughs> Maybe I, we're in the middle of nowhere. I yeah. don't know. And I don't know what we will be doing exactly at uh, 6 o'clock uh, Central European Summertime, which is 11 a.m. in Central. Uh, but that, then the camera will go like yeah. this. We'll because see. It, maybe we'll have to walk around a little bit. Yeah, we bought a, uh, we bought a, a selfie stick, stick today. <laughs> so we're going to use, we're going to do that. Oh, we are so professional. Our filming gear is so professional right now. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. But you have to show what you brought, Carl. Yeah, actually... Actually, the whole thrift store shopping uh, made me think, because um, we have actually been shopping or buying things uh, for a long time. And back, <laughs> Surprise. back when we sold the apartment in Oslo, remember that, was the year 2000. Mm -hmm. We went to Paris to celebrate my 30th birthday. So it was 
this time of the year and was it the first time that we visited the 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 flea market in the Saint Ouen, the mm. Cliancourt? I think it was. Yeah. So yeah. we went to uh, Cliancourt, the massive flea market um, in Paris, and nice we one. bought a lot of interesting and fun textiles. I remember, among other things, we bought this lace tablecloth. It was fabric and lace mm -hmm. that we used as curtain. I don't know where that is. Do you know? In the trunk. In the trunk. Somewhere. We need to. We need to find it. I'm organizing. I'm. Or, I'm organizing. Yeah. That. And I we bought want to put everything with lace in one suitcase. Yeah, and we bought this fabric. This is a hundred years old. This is um, this is from the nineteen twenties, early twenties, and it's uh, I like it because it's very washed out, and it's a cream colored fabric. I don't know if you can see it well, um, but anyway, it's a cream colored fabric, and uh, it has a floral. It's got like a. Um, floral print on it with uh, some sharp uh, dark red and then in other places the the color is a little bit worn out mm. it's really really beautiful um, and I kind of wanted to rekindle with this uh, fabric because I thought down in our guest house we have green walls and we have a nice bed and I was thinking it could be like a really nice uh, fabric yeah. to put over the bed but we Actually, for many years we put we had this on the wall to hide the old door yeah. to the waiting room in the behind here because that was the waiting room in this rail station, and we, we just yeah so when put that, it up on the wall so it bleached yeah but but I like the bleach because it gives it it gives it that patina you know this is a textile that is vintage we're gonna put it on the bed so we're gonna make a really nice bed and then we're gonna put the the textile kind of half away halfway and then we're going to fold it. We're going to put it under a blank, over a blanket and then fold it. We're not going to do it like a bedspread, but like a nice vintage textile. But the problem with it is that it's got holes um, in it. And I realized that when I washed it. Uh, so um, use, I still think that it's nice that it's worn out. It's vintage, it's, it's 100 years old, but I want the holes to disappear. So I told Arnett that I had this idea of a project and my idea is because you can see all the red, right? And you can see the red is also random, the, the florals. I want to darn all the holes with red thread. They're very small holes. And I think that by darning it with red, red thread um, and doing, you know, some we, we could even embroider a flower, but some just do like a visible darning, like a little square or a little circle or whatever. My idea is that it will get layers. So it will look like it's both printed and then like there's a, an additional layer. And I think that in the end of the day, you're not from afar, you're not even going to see that it's darned. But from close up, you will. But, you know, the whole thing of darning and doing the visible darning I is interesting. Yeah. And you can um, you can actually borrow my frame. Yeah, your embroidery frame. Put it up. Now that's my idea, and I said to Arnett, I want to do the, I want to darn this, but I have no idea because I've never darned anything in my life. So you're going to teach me. Yeah, I'm going to teach you. Actually, I have an old book. I think it's from the 50s or 40s that my mother had, and there's all different darning yeah. techniques. I think you could. Like a lot of the things you see on Instagram and yeah, and I don't even care because there's there's also red, there's a, there's pink as well. So I think, and then there's blue. There's like um, there's like a blue gray. There's a blue gray here as well. Uh, and then there's pink. So I don't really nice care. One. I don't I really think... care about the colors, but I want to get similar but not matching it. But so take a little bit of red thread, a little bit of the blue, uh, of blue and a yeah. little bit of pink, and then try to incorporate that as a new design. So but you can also do that with the flowers because this is almost like the embroidery. Yeah, you can, but I like, on the fold I like the washed out look. I, I know. think the washed out look is nice. I know, but you can't get so, rid of that. So anyway, that's my idea. And then you kind of, it's all about recycling. It's about keeping something old and treasuring and cherishing it. And, and maintaining it and maybe passing it on to the next generation in better shape. And I think that by doing this kind of darning visibly and making it on purpose so that it looks like part of the design, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be fabulous. I, I estimate that there's some 30 holes in it though. Oh, no, probably. So uh, I have my work cut off. <laughs>
Yeah. But but maybe this is what I'm gonna take on the Hurtigruten on the on our knitting cruise. Yeah. I don't show you what I'm gonna take on Hurtigruten. I'm probably gonna take a lot of stuff, but I have now. I I think I said in one episode once that when I retire, I will knit through all the old patterns we have. But I'm gonna start now. So I found this one. It's a. Uh, I think this one is so beautiful, and it's it's called Rune Sport. I think it's a Swedish pattern. Mm. I have no clue if this the yarn has gone long, long time ago. So I'm gonna make this one for me. It's a young boy, so it's probably too small. But I'm just gonna I'm gonna measure like the breast breast measurement measurement and cast on stitches from that, and then. This is easy because you just knit the green and then when you have enough you see how many stitches you need for the pattern so you know when to start the pattern and mm. and you put it on two circulars and try it on and see if it fits and so th this will be made in our yarn yeah this is for the knit the yeah. knitting cruise it's gonna be nice and now when you say our yarn uh people are wondering what is that so we work with rowan um, and Rowan is a, a really nice uh, yarn company. They do beautiful yarns and uh, last year they asked us to develop a yarn together with them or design a yarn mm -hmm. and we did and it's called Norwegian wool. The yarn is, uh, the wool comes from Norway and we've designed all the colors for it. Um, and originally, I, don't, I can't remember, I think it was nine colors originally. Did I say breast? What do you call it? Chest? Chest measurements. Not breast. Chest measurements. I'm not going to measure our breasts. No, our no, chest. The chest. Yeah. Sorry, but my English, English is my first language. Yeah, so, so <laughs> obviously you should know I'm that. I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> I also have problems with carpenter. Yeah. Or carpets on the floor. Yeah, carpenter, I, I carpets. Can't see them. Um, yeah, there's a couple more. I have more. I, yeah. I can't hear the difference. <laughs> People always laugh when Arne says charts because... Yeah, that's sh charts. Yeah. Exactly. And charts. Yeah. People know that. <laughs> anyway, oh. anyway, we've got we've, we've got this beautiful yarn, Norwegian wool. We've done nine colors inspired by our Norwegian culture and heritage, like this beautiful mustard. Um, like, this is what you see on yeah. back on the Saturday style and folk costume. Yeah. So example. these these that's also a, a new, an, an old color. Yeah. And this fall we're this launching. Is a new color. Yeah, we're launching some new colors this fall. We've got a pink, which is really nice. It's kind of it's got um. It's a little bit of a lilac. It's really nice. And then we've got this really nice uh, burgundy. And cream. That we really like. And then we added a cream. This we have one more. And there's a green somewhere here. Yeah, there it that, is. That, that, that and there's a light green. green. So again, it's, uh, it's, a pal it's a color palette that is influenced by our culture and heritage um, somehow. Yeah. And uh, we always are... look at old Norwegian stuff when we pick colors. So for this collection, it was a lot of rose, uh, rose marine, rose paintings yeah. of folk costumes. And um, no, for, for the first collection, for this collection that you show now, the colors uh, came from, you know, f is it fish nets? Heidi Blatcher, love, I love when Arne, she, Heidi Blatcher says, I love when Arne says, boom, boom box. Yeah, boom, boom box. Yeah, that's the one. That is the CD player. <laughs> or I have my boom, boom it's a, box. It's a portable one, yeah. yeah I, I just stored my old, my old CDs because uh, way back, like when C the CD, CDs came, they said that was so good mm. and it, it could spill food oh, on them and David and I, and I took them out again because now I'm playing in my room and Davy Hensley says my favorite Anna-ism Arna-ism is going bananas and I sure I'm sure that he likes that because of the way you pronounce it can you pronounce bananas going bananas yeah there you go bananas yeah bananas <laughs> So anyway, um, here are the colors again. Um, there's a new collection by us uh, for Rowan coming up uh, this fall. And it's really cool. It's got all these really big geometric patterns. And we blend the new colors that we've designed with the old colors. Now, if you haven't, if you don't know about the wool, go to rowan.com um, and check out the Norwegian wool. And if you search for the Arne and Carlos patterns, all the patterns that we designed for this yarn last year are free. So you can either buy them in a magazine, I think it's $2 or $10, I don't remember. You can either buy them as a printed magazine, but if you don't want them in print, just want them um, 
uh, digitally, you can uh, download them for free at the Roman website. And you can also go to our website, arnacollis.com, and, and look for the yarn there, I think. For this one, this one is uh, olive green. We don't have olive green. So, so we're going to have to incorporate it. I think, yeah, I think I will use this blue. And then it's, uh, I'm, I'm going to have the cream. Cream and there's mustard and red. Mm. So, so we have this one and this one. So this will be the colors that I use for this old sweater. Yeah. And well, can you imagine if we manage to go through all the old patterns? That would be cool. And knit them. That would be so cool. If you first have your what yeah. I call breast measurements. Yeah, the so-called breast measurements. <laughs> the so-called breast measurements. You can knit anything. That's all you need. So, and then you can get, get exactly your size. Minnie also says you're going to look patriotic, Arne. Which you are, because red, white and blue are yeah. the Norwegian colors. The colors are the Norwegian flag. Yes. This is the and Norwegian flag. And then I just flag. add black and mustard mm -hmm. to be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit wild, so, so yeah. that, that is what new project that yeah. is the cruise project. The, the, the blue one is uh, sitting in the car while Carlos is re re driving. Yeah. Project you have your darning, yeah. Project. And then we've been doing these little small things. We we wanted to knit up a slipper, uh, <laughs> we you know, this is we slipper, stopped. We stopped. yeah, <laughs> because of it's actually, artist arm. It's actually this way, I couldn't do more, yeah. So this is a slipper. Uh, Actually, Rowan will make the. Rest. Yeah, we've designed this for Rowan, and uh, and it's uh, just we were just trying to figure out how the yarn uh, felt in the washing machine, and it felt beautifully. Um, about thirty percent, it shrinks thirty percent when you felt it. So we've been doing a lot of tests in the washing machine, and this is going to be a new slipper design that we're doing for Rowan. Um, and then we've been doing these because, the, you know, this is how to find out uh, where, how much the... Um, so this is how you find out how much you make the, uh, the yarn shrinks. You make a swatch like this, you put it in the washing machine, and then it comes out like this. So here is the... Um, so these are... So here's the before. What you call this again? Coasters. Coasters. And here's the after. So... Um, and that's the... Yeah, it's hard yeah. to see the difference. There, because this we make this with the intarsia and garter stitch. Yeah. So, but we had to make a few because the way it shrinks, it took time to make the pattern because mm. you can't make a square because it doesn't shrink. Yeah. So, but this this is a fun project. It is, yeah. So we'll have a pile. We will have a pile yeah. of this. We want to do a series of coasters in florals, um, like a set. I think six coasters is good, um, or twelve maybe, but six anyway. We can do six, and then we can change the colorway so that you can have another. So you can have twelve. Yeah. But but we want to do a set of coasters. Um, if people are interested in it, we'll definitely do it. So uh, make sure to comment. Um, you know. Right now, because we're live uh, at this point, you can comment in the in the comments field later on. Because for those of you who didn't watch it live, you're now watching the rerun. And uh, if you're watching the rerun, you can comment here below. Um, let us know if you're interested. Yeah, Christmas in these. coasters. It's coming. Christmas coasters. We it's have a coming. plan to do some because uh, right? it's going to be fun. And, and, and you know what? This felt really good. Yeah, and this takes me back to you know the good old days when. Uh, when we were locked down and doing the little blocks, remember? Yeah. Yeah. So good old days. We just have to, you know, there's a lot of testing. When but you can't make the blocks and felt them. No, you can't. Because the... Yeah. Yeah, they will be, they won't be squared. No. They will be, what you call it when it goes this way? They will be... The rectangular. Yeah, rectangular. Rectangular. Yeah. And also there's a lot of design work involved because you need to, you know, you need to know how it's the, the, how the fabric is going to react and how the, the floral will, will look because they are different uh, and you can see that there's some design work yeah. involved. So, so these are like the floral coasters and then there are Christmas coasters coming and maybe more. It's so fun to make. Oh, coasters. this is interesting. Jill Ruditz is saying, I had a knitting teacher who told me when knitting color work, don't use white, use off-white instead. Do you follow this rule too? Well, we don't well, think we don't think the, of it as a rule, but actually no. we do prefer 
uh, cream and off-white to optic white. Yeah. But that's because uh, of heritage and tradition. If you're knitting a traditional Norwegian sweater, um, you wouldn't use a very optic no. white because they wouldn't have used that in the past. No, but like if you do something in grey, because there's a lot of old patterns in grey and white, mm. it could be two greys with white, for example, then I would use white, white, I think. Yeah. It depends on the, on the grey. Yeah. To see... Because, yeah. So we don't yeah. we don't believe in rules actually, and actually if, if there's something we believe in we believe in is breaking rules. We want to break the mold because breaking the mold is the only way to create something new. You have to take everything and break it down and build it up again. So I would never call it a rule, but I I, I would actually agree that we have a preference for off whites yeah. and creams. We tend to go for that. Yeah, we tend to more. go more for that and less for the optic white. So in our own collection of Norwegian wool, we don't have optic white. No. But uh, like if you do, if you think Norwegian, oh. before, you want to have. That's also interesting. Color. Minnie Olsson is saying that optic white doesn't felt as well because of the chemicals they use to get the color. Okay. That's actually, uh, we don't know that for, for sure, but I do know that different colors react differently uh, when you dye. So if you have like sheets that are white and you have maybe the same sheet think, in gray, mm -hmm. they may actually react differently when you iron them. That, that's for sure. I think this is cream. Yeah, it's more cream. Than no, this. it's optic white. This is Cream and I used optic on this one. You did? Yeah. But we don't have that in Norwegian wool. We, we have that. we have white. But not optic white. They're oh. they're both different off white. This is the whitest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not optic. Yeah. So we don't do optic. Yeah. We we paint we we you know a couple of years ago we repainted our rooms and we went to this really fancy store to buy paint. And uh, we said we wanted to do all the framework in white. And they said, well, <laughs> what kind of white? <laughs> And uh, I mean, we should have known this. We've worked with colors for all our professional career. But yeah, white is never white. So there is so white, many. White blouse yeah. is white. Oh, um, Catherine Richardson is asking to show the coasters because she's late to the party. You can watch the rerun, but uh, here they are anyway. So this is the before and before is the after. And, after. and, and it's knitted, as I said, in the garter. Garter stitch, stitch. instead of instead of um, because stock if, in you, it. if you do stock in it, they won't be so thick. If you do garter yeah. stitch, but then it's a and the it's good a different thing, pattern. Yeah, and the good thing about, about garter stitch is you don't need to purl because you just turn and you knit. You turn and knit. So it's the same with this one, the Norwegian yeah. the brioche. We never, never purl mm. unless the rib. And, yeah, and the yarn is always. We should do a short video on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got a great idea. I think the greatest thing about this Sit In It For A Bit uh, format, our new format, is that we're interacting with people. We're getting to reply and we have a conversation now. It's not one way. It's not us trying to tell bad jokes. So, um, <laughs> so this is a great uh, opportunity, I think, to get to know everybody better and to make sure that, um, that we can, you know, so, give, a, give an immediate response. Anna Smith says... Um, Oh, never. The never heard of optic white. white. Optic white. If it, is it off white maybe antique? No, off, no op optic, optic white is the white, the white, 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 white. That is so white that it's white, and then everything else is uh, off. So uh, yeah, we've got a comment here as well from, uh, let's see, from Shelley Angel, 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 saying that she's very happy that we're back and live. Thank you so much Thank for you. Uh, Sorry. for your. Um, for your lovely comment, we're also very happy to be back and to be live. Um, this is going to make all the difference for us. We're not going to have to stress anymore to get it all done before we travel or when we're traveling that we can't send it to Eric because the file's too big. So uh, this is the only way to do sit in it for a bit. When so we if we say something really stupid, we can, forgive us, we, we can say, please forgive us yeah. live. <laughs> So this is really this is really cool. Um, we've had some people asking about our tour schedule. Our tour schedule is available if you go to arnacarlos.com and you subscribe to our newsletter. Then you will get it um, in your in our mailbox or in your mailbox. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've got there's still availability in Canada. We're doing Prince Edward Island. It's going to be in the end of November, and we're going to be doing the events there in collaboration with Fleece and Harmony. No, Harmony. Not <laughs> Fleece and Harmony, uh, which is actually a really nice farm, I heard. Um, and uh, they make their own wool. 
uh, and we are really looking forward to that. Um, so that there's availab availability for Fleece and Harmony. Go to Fleece and Harmony on Google mm -hmm. uh, in Prince Edward Island. It's one of those places we'd, we've always loved, wanted to go. I am a big fan of Anne of Green Gables, the books, um, and also the series that I think was made in the 80s or maybe the 90s. I love that show. And actually, I like the modern one as well. So uh, we're going there, in, uh, and that's available. There's availability in um, New Orleans. Yep. Um, and I believe that, uh, that there's tickets for the Nashville events. We're not going to Dollywood uh, per se. Uh, we're going to Nashville to do events there. But we're kind of hoping to run into Dolly because I know that she lives in Nashville. But they probably have like vinyl shops and stuff. I think it's more Dolly. Yeah. Vinyl. Yeah. And so Shirley is saying that Fleece and Harmony also have a podcast. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, they have a great podcast uh, on YouTube. So, um, yeah, we're not That's going to Seattle, the unfortunately. We will post the coasters soon. But I was thinking maybe we have to knit different color combinations yeah. or maybe we just do the color combinations on drawing. I mm -hmm. don't know. Yeah, we don't have patterns for the coasters out yet. And actually, we've only done one design. And we want to do a series. Uh, it would be really cool to do a series of botanicals uh, as coasters, I think. And it's, it's fun because, you know, you only have this much surface. So it, the question is, how much can you fit in a surface and how good can you make it look? So but it's nice. Um, you put it in the washing machine with some underwear or something. Yeah. So, yes. Okay, Carl. Yeah, I, I think, think... We have 15 minutes. Yeah, our 15 minutes are up um, and we're going to be logging off soon. Uh, we got to make dinner. And um, I have some ends, I have to read yeah. in some ends on something. I'm Tomorrow we have a really busy day, we have to finish up a lot of work. Then on Friday we're going to start the wedding festivities, and actually Friday happens to be my birthday as well. So uh, it'll be wedding Double festivities party. slash my birthday. Yeah. Although I'm going to be very low-key about my birthday because I do not well, wish... Well, I won't be low-key about Well, no, but we don't want to take any attention from the bride. No and the groom so no. but anyway friday is the friend uh, the party so we're it's but still i'm gonna be very low-key and um, saturday we've got the um, we got the wedding so we are gonna be all dressed up and ready to go um but before that we'll be thrift shopping but not fall costumes no no fall costumes it's a, it's a summer it's a summer wedding, wedding so we Too are hard. in suits and ties we may post a picture if you're interested in seeing what we look like we may post something on instagram of what we look like for the wedding um, and then on Sunday, we're going to have brunch with uh, the family because uh, we're very close to them. They're actually kind of our family in a way. And then from that, we're going to go uh, to Sweden. And then next Wednesday, well, so on Sunday, we've got a Sunday episode. And then next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central European time, which is noon Eastern time. It's 11 a.m. Um, Central time. It's 9 a.m. in uh, Pacific time. And it, for, for you Brits uh, in Britain, it's uh, 5 uh, PM. Um, we're going to be doing Sit in it for a bit hello, the very first one. It's going to be from a lovely place called Schuleholm Castle. Schuleholm. Sorry, Schuleholm Castle, where we're going to be staying the night. So uh, we are very looking, because very we, much looking we forward to that. We plan to stay one night because it's such a long road, because the plan was to drive the Beetle, but the Beetle is in the garage, so we're doing the electric car. Yeah, we're driving the electric but car. But we have the room in the place, so we're going to stay there anyway. Yeah. So and we're, we're going to start with thrift shopping on Saturday. Saturday. And so we will probably, yeah, um, my ambition is to come home with a, a stash of thrift shopping that I don't know where we're going to put. But well, we have the, the storage house, which yeah. is going to be the studio, and we're going to show you that later. Also, and we're doing a lot of rethinking about our interiors as well. We're, re we're kind of starting to redecorate again. And uh, I think that after 10 years, we, you know, why not get some new pots and pots and cups, saucers for the, you know, to drink tea out we'll of. paint the walls. Paint the walls. New get, get a new fabric to put on a, a bed, you know, stuff like because that. Because we have so little to do. Yeah, we have so much time. So little time, so many things to do. Anyway, Arne, I think we need some yeah. formalities. Okay, so if you like our videos, put your thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Because yeah. then you won't miss the episode. Yes. And put on the notification because then you really won't miss an episode. Yeah. If you don't know who we are, if you've just, you know, by accident stumbled into this podcast and you really like what you see, uh, we've got tons of videos, we post tutorials on Sundays, 
and we post, we do our podcast on Wednesday. So twice a week, there's something here. Uh, loads of tutorials on knitting. We've done so you loads. Can binge watch. You can binge that, watch. That's what they call it. Yeah, and we support that. So we support come on. <laughs> I've been watching. I mean, that's not going to kill you. Anyway, you can binge, binge watch uh, tutorials on crochet. We've done tutorials on embroidery. We've done on knitting, mostly on knitting. Food. Food. Um, and, uh, and then we've got our website at arnacollis.com where you can purchase patterns. And if you're curious about more of our work, there is a whole portfolio uh, area where you can see images of our work, both in the fashion industry and now. Um, there's a journey segment where you can read about the knitting cruises that we organize uh, in Norway. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and to get on our mailing list is the best thing because then you are always updated. And for some reason, we prefer posting our schedule by email and not having it so that everybody can see. So if you, if you, um, if you subscribe to our newsletter, yeah. you also get the, uh, the, the tour schedule that we're doing. Are we more than 15 minutes, Carlos? Yeah. I think we should so, say goodbye. I think we are kind of, I would say we're at 17 yeah. minutes. What will happen when we do the hello next week? I don't know. That's is supposed it? to be 10 minutes. And again, for those that don't understand because you're new, this is a running gag because Arne and I have no sense of time. We always say we're going to do something. It's, you know, it's just five minutes. And then it takes much longer. Oh, okay. So, so we have to read all the comments because yeah. we can't see all of them now. We're going to go read out the comments. We want to thank all of you for joining us uh, on this live. Uh, it's been delightful. And I have to say, I am loving how dynamic Sit in It for a Bit is becoming right now. Mm. And I think it's that... It's nice to... Not that I can read that quick because... Yeah, but we have... We have but I can't look down time. right now. Yeah. I have to look there. But anyway, it is dynamic now. It's more dynamic. There's more interaction and I love it. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for showing up and thank you so much for watching and see you again next Wednesday. But before that, see you on Sunday. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you. And now we have to figure out how we... How we do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, 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 no. Or whatever the music was. And then we... <laughs> How do we quit this? How do we quit this? Not there. Oh, maybe here. Do you want to stop streaming and...